Hello everyone, welcome, glad you're here. So this is another segment of a dose of reality and helping everyone understand what is going on out there in this crazy system and why crypto and DeFi, of course, is our solution going forward to get out of this fiat mix and this fiat in insane matrix that everyone is in. So today was the CPI consumer price index or basically CP lies, a lot of people like to call it. I'm gonna cover that. Moody's had a huge bomb that they dropped on the entire industry. And basically they just put the entire world on notice and just be, this is a huge thing. I'm gonna cover that, lots to discuss. And also some interesting info from the banking sector itself and what's going on, of course, with Silicon Valley Bank and all banks in general. So first, before I do real quick, if you're new here, if you haven't done so, do me a favor. Let's get more people to learn about this. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, cost you nothing. It takes a few seconds of your time. I even give you a few seconds here now to do it. Also, leave me a comment as you go along the way and I will check in. Want more people to know about this. If you wanna help more people understand and how to unplug and how this actually does affect your life and what you could do and how this relates to crypto. Also, links below if you wanna join a Telegram group. Definitely a lot of great people there you can chat with and talk to if you're interested. Also, links below for support the channel, joining the channel, or everything you can find. You can find everything in the description. So now without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so as you see here right now, consumer price inflation rose at 6% in February for prices post strong monthly gains. So the thing that's been understand is the markets actually went up today because it was in line. So let's look here. So inflation ease for an eighth straight month in February, as slow as a slowing rise in food costs offset a bump in gasoline prices and another spike in rent. Consumer prices um, increased 6% from a year earlier, down from 6.4% in January and a 40 year high of 9.1% in June. We've been going on with this inflation for over pretty much a year now. Okay, first it was transitory, then all these other excuses, then, oh, sorry, you made, made a mistake, it's not transitory, it seems to be more sticky. Understand the casino game and basically what's going on with the stock market, what's going on with the fiat world. The fact that everything went up after we're having this huge bank collapse over the weekend, having three banks basically shut down by the FDIC taking over. I'm going to cover that a little bit here in a second. And we're still at 6% inflation. Everybody's like cheering. Yes, it's come down from 9%, but the Fed wants 2%. So if the Fed wants 2%, we're still 3x higher than their target rate. 6% is still very, very high inflation historically. And this is off of how they cook the books. So don't forget, they changed the basket. They constantly, they just changed it in January again. They constantly change the way they measure it. And everybody's inflation is different depending on your situation, you know, depending on what you do, where you live, what matters to you, what you do or don't buy. So this whole thing is a manipulated number. And even after that, it's still at 6%. So what does that mean? Okay, so let's jump over here for a second. Now, this is a very, very big news. Moody's, Moody's is a huge rating agency. They, they, they rate credit. So you have um, S&P and you have Moody's. They're both, both registered credit. Credit goes from AAA to AA, single A, and triple B is considered junk bonds and below. So Moody's just cut outlook on US banking system to negative. Not one bank, not a bank, not a region, not a name, Moody's cut outlook on the entire US banking system to negative. They're saying the entire United States banking system is negative. It's citing rapidly deteriorating operating environment. Okay, let that sink in. Really let that marinate and resonate what I just said. So the Moody's investor services on Monday cut its view for the entire banking system to negative from stable. The big three rating firms cited rapid, rapidly deteriorating operating environment, despite regulators' efforts to try to shore up the industry. This is a harsh blow to an already reeling sector. Moody's Investor Service has cut its view on the entire banking system to negative from stable. You have to understand how huge this is, okay? They change everything for what's going on at Silicon Valley Bank. We have the different banks that fell from Signature Bank in New York. 
two, number two and number three biggest banks failures happened within a 72 hour period over the weekend. The number one was uh, Washington Mutual back in 2008, but they were basically in a huge um, like mortgage fraud or whatever stuff they were doing there. So that was a whole different situation with the housing market from 08 and all the things that were happening, you know, back in that whole um, great recession as it's called. But this is really, really a big deal. Okay, the Federal Reserve established a facility to, to ensure that institutions hit with liquidity problems would have access to cash. The Treasury is now backstopping because we know that they're doing a bailout. They're not going to call it that. Um, the administration is going to call that Yellen, who's basically another. She's horrible and she doesn't know how to run anything. I don't know how she's in charge of the Treasury. She's lied to everybody. She's lied to all of us from the beginning. It's basically saying it's not a bailout. This is a bailout. When you tell a co companies, they will have full access to their funds and their funds are fully insured when the FDIC only covers up to 250000 that is a bailout. How do you just bail out everybody? There's not enough money in the system. The FDIC does not have enough money in the system. It's not possible. Okay. So I'm going to switch over here for a second. Um, Silicon Valley Bank's new CEO urges clients to help us rebuild our deposit base. So listen, something here, and this is, you can understand why Moody's is basically cutting the entire industry. And again, I'll finish up at what it means to you and how we can hopefully protect ourselves. Um, so Tim Myo Myopolis, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, uh, was appointed by the regulators to run SV SVB. It, he is urging clients to move their deposits elsewhere to please consider moving some of them back as part of a secure deposit diversification strategy. So let's dig into this here. So if I highlight there, sorry, highlight this here. He says, if you, your portfolio companies or your firm moved funds within the past week, please consider moving some of them back as part of a secure deposit diversification. Um, this He was appointed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC as CEO of the bank, now called Silicon Valley Bridge Bank. So over 40 billion in deposits exited last week as startups and venture funds fled the failing institution just after they reported a mid-quarter report that showed they sold $21 billion worth of securities at a loss. I said this in the last video, all these banks in a zero interest rate environment, what they were doing is buying long dated bonds because they needed yield. You don't get paid any yield. Even with the Fed raising rates to 5%, we're almost at here where we're looking at, and they're gonna raise probably another 25 basis points next week at their next meeting. That's not gonna stop. Um, but a lot of people think they're going to raise 25 and just stop and pause. Is this whole thing an inside job? And this is more cooking the books to try to, you know, manipulation and this whole fiat ponds again? Probably. But the thing is, 21 billion. So when rates went up and they're keeping money in the short end, because what happens to banks is they borrow on the short end and they and they lend on the long end and they make the spread. But they're not paying you anything in the deposit. So they want you to bring your money back to a bank that's been taken over. I would never move my money back to that bank. I'd be gone forever. Um, you're making, you're giving me, making me whole and letting me have access to it. Um, that's a sign to get everything I can out and get the hell out of Dodge because I want nothing to do with you. And if you think I'm going to come back and leave it in there, you're crazy. Especially, um, and they're saying everybody, the Fed cannot backstop every bank. The Fed cannot make every single person whole. Again, the FDIC only has $140 billion in their coffers and they have a line of credit for another hundred billion from Janet Fellen Yellen at the treasury. There's 20 trillion dollars in the banking system. This is why Moody's has stepped in and basically said um, they cut outlook on the entire US banking system because of the fact that everything is negative. The entire banking system is negative. It's all for gazy. This Ponzi scheme just keeps moving around and shuffling money around the whole thing is just fake. It's all pretend. Your money in the bank is not yours. Um, so this is the post here. So in the post, I'm not even going to say the name, didn't specify a limit on the FDIC protection in line with federal, federal regulators' comments that the backstop would be structured in a manner that fully protects all depositors. How can you guarantee that when the FDIC, as I said here, mandate only is supposed to insure up to 250k of depositors per, of deposits per customer. How in the world can they do that? They can't do that. So they're basically bailing out this one bank. 
They're trying to get people to come back. They're trying to put confidence in the banking system. Moody's just told the entire world that our entire U.S. banking system is fake and fugazi. And basically the whole thing is negative. And they're telling people to, to run. So yes, the bank stocks um, ran up today. Wall Street manipulates things. The Fed manipulates things. The government, they all manipulate all of this stuff in the matrix to try to keep you and try to pretend that you're safe when you're not. You never have been safe. So when you look at that, that is why you are seeing, let me see if I can close this here. One second. There we go, let me close that off there. This is why you're seeing this run up here in Bitcoin. Bitcoin was all the way down at 19,000 to 20,000. Okay, when we were back before this stuff happened. And then look, look at this run that we've had here. Let me close this off here. Let me do a little measuring here. Let's start from the bottom. Let's go wick to the top, which was at 26 and six. So we're looking at about a 34 plus percent gain. 34% gain in like four or five complete days. That is huge. That is an unheard of. Um, yes, there's been some pullbacks here. You know, you have a bull flag, ran up, bull flag, ran up. It's retesting here. Everybody knows that resistance level is about 25,200. This is right now for traders. So right now with Bitcoin, and those are the things we know that sound money, 21 million total. And that's why crypto and DeFi is a place to be. Because yes, we've had some collapses in DeFi. Yes, we've had some things like Celsius, um, FTX was a scam and basically in cahoots with all the uh, Congress and regulators and paying them all off and all the lobbyists, uh, which is all coming out, you know, basically buying off and had um, Gary Gensler in his back pocket. That's another thing that's going to keep blowing up here. Gary Gensler should be on his way out hopefully soon. Um, the sooner the better, of course, because all of them are all saying, we're here to protect you. We're here to protect you. There's no protection. There's not what they're in for. There's not what they're doing. So long term crypto, Bitcoin, ETH, a lot of the big blue chips here and stuff, they're going to do great. They're going to do fine the long term. We may still see some pullback as Bitcoin's trying to establish that 25.3, as I said, um, resistance level, trying to flip that to support from resistance. This is all short term. Yes, if you want to trade and speculate and do things right now, Bitcoin is sitting in this upper band of take profit zone in the four hour chart here on Lux Algo. This the Lux Algo, I have Bollinger Band, I have some other indicators all helping to see and trade and see indications of where it's going, and how to track in the short term. But long term, this, in my opinion, listen, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, always do your own research. But the bottom line is this looks to be where you want to be, where the sound money is, and where you're not going to be in this made up fake fiat system. This is how you escape. DeFi has ways, ways where people are lending and doing things that are collateralized, that actually are not running zombie companies. I mean, the Fed itself is running at a negative. The Fed itself is not profitable right now, but they can make up money. They could print money. They could borrow from the future selves. They're letting banks, again, as I said yesterday, get loans at full par value, even though their bonds are worth less, even though they're, they're not worth par. You know, they're letting them take loans on money that they don't even have for 10 years, five years, 20 years in the future. They're, they're manipulating the entire system, which no one else can do. No one else is allowed to do only to perpetuate and keep the Ponzi going. So this is where the sound money is long term. This is where the things you want to be long term. Yes, there's going to be volatility. But, but the whole point is we're seeing how they're trying to bring money back into the system. We're seeing how one of the major, major rating agencies has cut the outlook on the entire U.S. banking system. So, again, protect yourselves. Stay vigilant out there. Make sure your money is safe. Do what you can. You know, be careful with these regional banks. Who knows what's going to happen? There's going to be more imploding. I have no idea. But as more news keeps developing going forward over and over again, I will be covering it. I will be bringing it to everyone. So I appreciate your time. I hope this is found, you found value. Do me a favor again. If you think this is important, leave a comment. Give this a like. Give this a thumbs up. We need to get more out to more people. We need to let people know what's going out there in the system and understand how this is all affecting us and understand how we need to protect ourselves with sound money going forward and making sure that we're not screwed and we're not going to be the ones holding the bag because banks will look to bail in. A bank bail-in, look up the laws, look up bank bail-in, look up, the, it passed in 2012, just do a Google search and cover that in the future if some like, or leave any comments. But the point is they can basically just give you certificates in the failed bank and not return your funds. If too many banks fail, the FDIC does not have enough money for everybody. 
There's just not enough to go around. You play musical chairs, who's going to be left without a chair when the music stops? Who's going to get first? So just protect yourselves. This is the facts. These are the numbers. You can verify it, Google. I'm not making this up. This is all out there. I'm just passing information to you. I hope, again, found value. Links below. Join Telegram. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. We'll love to have you. Really appreciate a lot of ways in the description with links. You can support the channel. Wish you all the best of luck. Hope you have a great night. And as always, here is to your success.